Hi everyone, it's Anna Haferman and today we're going to do this Christmas stocking and this is using the brick stitch that I showed in the last video. I used three skeins of Dollar Tree yarn and I'd just like to remind everyone to subscribe and like and leave comments and if you feel like it, if you like my videos, consider hitting the buy me a coffee link and uh, any donation goes to helping me create more videos and of course buy more yarn. So thanks very much and let's get to it. I'm going to cast on from 29 on the left to 29 on the right and uh, I'm using some waste yarn for that. Hanging the comb. And I'm going to be on tension 6.5. So I'm going to do some waist yarn at about eight rows. And then I'll put my waist yarn away and thread my main yarn. Before you thread your main yarn, uh, wind off a little ball of white and that's going to be used for the heel of the sock or the stocking uh, because we're going to stop in the middle and then on the right do the heel. So you'll want just a small ball of white set aside. So now we're going to do the 16 rows here. We're going to do a transfer row and then we're going to do 24 stitches and then 8. So that set your row counter at 0 and do 24, uh, 16 rows of white. Leave a long tail so you can seam up at the end. I've got about, I don't know, a yard. It's best to err on the side of caution. So just a longish tail. And then we'll do 16 rows. So now I've done 16 rows and now I'm going to do a pico row. So I'm going to transfer every other needle just like we did in uh, one of the hat videos, the mitten video, certain videos where we've done this a lot. So just transfer every other needle to its neighbor. And now that you have all the stitches transferred, bring all those needles. Make sure they're all in work. Make sure you've got that number 29. And do 24 rows. And I put some weights on here. I like these big weights that came with my bulky machine. I'll put a link as to where you could find some of those because they really do help with this yarn. It's thicker and the bigger weights really do help. So 24 more rows. So I've done my 24 rows and now I'm on row count 40 and now I'm going to do a second pico row. 
So that's uh, this one here. And what happens is the um, um, that's the original 16. Then I do the Pico 24, another Pico, and then eight more, and then it folds over like that. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer every other stitch to its neighbor. So I've got my stitches transferred and I'm going to make sure all my stitches are in work and do eight more rows. And now that I've got my eight rows done, I can hang my hem. So I should be on row count 48. So I'll take my weights off, take my comb off, and then I can hang my hem. So to hang the hem, I'm going to take these white bars here and hang them on the needles, just like we did in so many of the other projects. So just go all the way across and hang each one. Now that I've got the stitches hung, I'm going to knit four rows. And I noticed I did not bring my number 29 needle in, so I'm going to do that right now. I should have done it earlier, but I'm sitting off to the side and it's hard to actually see what I'm doing so so pretend I did so hang some more weights and now I'm going to knit four rows and since I've got a lot going on on these stitches I'm pulling these uh, needles out to hold or to holding position and then I'm going to knit four rows and now I'm done with the with the with this part um, so the way it works is that's how it looks if you fold it all the way out and when you fold it down it sort of flaps over here at this one i actually only did two rows but i'm just showing you that as an example this one i did the four rows i ended up tacking it down so it would uh, lie flatter so once I've done that, now I'm going to start in my pattern. And so I'll set my row counter at zero. And I went over how to do the brick pattern in the previous video. So I'm not going to go into that too much because it, ends up, it will end up making much too long of a video. So if you haven't looked at that, go to that video and try the pattern before you start your stocking just so you get it down and know what you're doing so we're going to start the um start the fair isle pattern and i'm marking needles two four six eight so i'm going to mark numbers 21 through 29 with the washable marker and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So actually, did I say it's 21 through 28? So um, those are the ones I'm marking. I'm going to be doing the 
method uh, that I showed in the edge stitch video. I've got my pattern ready to go. I showed how to do that in the previous video. I've got the needle beetle and uh, this is actually the needle beetle 2 because I'm working with the KX 350. So and then I'm going to start in pattern. So I'm right here. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five and a half before I get to the heel. So I'm going to do five and a half repeats of that. So we'll start with um, start with white, and we pick out the needles for the pattern using the needle beetle, always pulling out that edge stitch, and this is. I showed this in detail in the previous video, so so we'll start there. And I've got the carriage, I need the carriage set on hold on this side and part on this side. So, and on the LK150 it's the same, so you'd be on one on that side and the circle on that side. And park the yarn on the other side change to the red yarn and knit back. And then we go with row two just like we did in the swatch video. So we're just going to keep doing that until we have five and a half repeats. So you can see here I've got one set of pattern completed and uh, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to mark, I can make a mark every time I complete a row or these are pretty easy to count. You can kind of see where they, uh, you'll have two sets like that, but I'm still going to make a little mark. I always make a little mark right there before I set my row counter back to zero for my next um, for my next pattern. And I showed this in the Faster Fair Isle video and a lot of the other ones. Um, so again, we're going to go with our selecting, pulling out that stitch, that last needle for the edge stitch video, for the edge stitches. And uh, I showed that in the edge stitch video. So there's the faster fair isle video, which talks about how to make the chart and do the fair isle with the needle beetle. There's the edge stitch video, which talks about having a nice edge on your fair isle so your floats go all the way to the edges. And then there's the swatch video showing how this pattern, how to make this particular pattern. So uh, if there's anything that you don't um, understand, go back and uh, refresh on those. And it should become clear. So I'm always pulling the contrast color here from what is in the feeder, always pulling out that last needle to hold and running the beetle. And that's how I'm getting the fair isle. So I've done two repeats so far and I'm uh, marking my second repeat. And um, one thing I want to point out is that it's pretty easy to see that you're doing the right thing as you go along because you'll see a pattern sort of emerge on the back. And that way, if it looks wrong, you may have to go back and uh, rip some rows out, but it'll look like that on the front. 
So I'm continuing on and I'm going to be doing five and a half repeats of the um, brick pattern uh, before I do the sock and what uh, the heel. So I'll do one, two, three, four, five and a half. I'll stop on row eight and this is row eight of that sixth repeat and then I'll do the heel. So I'll come back when I've got five and a half repeats or five repeats. So here I am, I've done five uh, repeats of my pattern and you can see how the back of the pattern uh, is easy to tell that you've done one, two, three, four, five repeats. So now I'm going to reset the row counter again and um, I'm going to do these four rows and then when I get to row eight, I'll sh we'll start the heel and I'll show you how that's done. So I'm on row seven and I'm going to knit back and then I'm going to, I'm on row eight now, so I'm going to knit that row. And then I'm going to stop. I'm going to park this white yarn over here on the left where I have the red yarn parked. It's off camera, but it's parked over there. Then I'm going to take the carriage and move it to the other side of the bed because I'm going to do the heel on this side. Um, it does matter if you want your stocking to hang this way you need to do your heel on this side if you wanted it to go this way you would do it on the other side because this is the back where the seam is and we want that hanging against the mantle so to do the heel I'm going to put the carriage and hold on both sides so I'm going to have it on H then I will put my needles from one to starting all the needles left of zero are going to be in hold and then I'm going to work the heel on this side of the um, this side of the bed these 29 stitches so I will uh, take out I need my smaller ball of yarn to do the heel because I have the white yarn here, I want to just continue on with that. So the way I did it was, um, that was row eight, then I did the heel, and then I did row nine. So I'm going to use the second ball of yarn uh, for the heel. So what I'm going to do is unthread that one and thread this one. So to knit my uh, heel, I'm going to have my carriage and hold, so I'm on H and H, and this one will have been on part, so you want it on N, so you're going to be on N, N, H, H. On the LK150, you'd be on triangle one, triangle one. So then I'll ha I want to have all my needles left of zero pulled out to hold, and all my other ones um, can be... Um, are in work. So I knit one row with the carriage in hold. And pull the last needle I knit out to hold. Then I knit another row. Pull the last needle I knit out to hold. And just keep doing that until we have... 10 on each side and 9 in the middle. And you do want to make sure you have weight on this because it's going to start pouching out and it's going to be, they'll, the stitches will jump off the needle. Now I showed this heel in the 
Christmas stocking video and another sock video I did. So if you if you don't get it from this one, you can go look at those videos. So now I've got here, I keep going and I'm really making sure I have weight on this. And even tensioning it with my hand. And again, I'm off to the side, so I'm not obstructing the camera, so it looks awkward. It really isn't if you're sitting in front of the knitting. four, six, eight. Now I've got nine on this side and I've got eight there. So I'm going to keep going. And now here I have nine and nine. And then I've got five, 10, 11 in the middle. So when I get nine on this side and nine on that side, I'm going to start increasing. So uh, because this was 29 stitches, I'm going down to nine, nine, and I'm going to have 11 left in the middle. I could also do 10, 10, and nine, but I don't want a really pronounced heel since this is a Christmas stocking. So uh, when I've pulled that last needle out, I start going on the opposite side and push the one opposite into work and then I'll push that one into work on this side go across this one and you still really want to make sure you've got your weight on your on, on that flap because what it's doing here is kind of flapping out and making the heel of the sock. So I'm just going to the opposite needle, the closest one to me, and um, knitting across and making sure that I've got some weight on it. There we go. We've got them all back knitted now. So the next thing we do is we can unthread this, um, this smaller ball of yarn now. So I'll just cut it. We're still in the pattern, which we're still in our sixth repeat of the pattern. So I'm going to take the carriage and bring it back to the other side and put it in, uh, let's see, I should have it on, at this point it should be like this, N, H, N, N. 
Now I've got my white yarn over here and I'm going to re-thread it and then we're on row nine. So I'm in the middle of my seventh repeat, uh, eighth repeat and I'm going to show you where we are so far. So we did the hem, then we did one, two, three, four, five and a half repeats of the pattern and did the heel. Then we did, after we did the heel, we continued on with row nine across. We reattached the yarn on the left. Then we did, finished the sixth repeat. This is the seventh repeat after the toe, after the heel and before the toe. And then I'm in the middle of the eighth one. So for the um, toe, that's the end of the sixth repeat, then seven and eight. And once I get to the end of eight, I'm actually gonna stop on row 16 rather than row 18 because I'm going to uh, start the toe right after this last row that has red in it. So to do that, just gonna finish. I'm on row 10 now and I'm gonna do these next four rows and then I won't do row 18 and 19. And I'm row 15 just finished and now I'm doing 16 so with that one I'm just pulling that last needle And now, because I'm done with my red, I can just cut that because I've already finished my, um, so my pattern's done. So I'm gonna cut the red and I'm actually gonna get rid of it because I'll need to thread the waste yarn. So I'll do my last row of white. And that's my last row of patterns. So you see here I have, that was the half one and that's one, two repeats. And so now I'll start the toe. So the toe is going to go on this side again, just like we did the heel. So to do that, I'm gonna put the carriage in hold so put the carriage in hold, you go H on both sides and make sure this one that's on P goes back to N. And again, the heel, uh, the toe is going to be exactly like the heel. So you just pull all the needles to the left of zero out to hold and then start doing the toe exactly the way we did the heel. So again, we'll just knit, knit a row Pull the furthest needle from the carriage, knit another row. Uh, closest needle to the carriage. So pull the one you just knit, knit another row. And always pull that inner needle. Until we have nine, nine, and 11. And there we go, our heel is finished. Our toe is finished. So you can see it looks exactly like the heel. So um, now I'm going to cut the white yarn, but I'm gonna leave a tail so that I can uh, graft with it later. So 
going to take my yarn and, you know, give myself a pretty good amount so that I uh, have enough to graft with. And pull that down. And I'm going to clip that down so that I don't mess it up now. Now I need the waste yarn again. I can take the white out. I don't need that anymore. And so I've got the waste yarn threaded. My carriage is still in hold. And now I'm going to knit waste yarn on these needles. Then I'm going to, um, so I'm just going to knit one, two, you want to hold that down, seven, eight rows is probably enough. Then I'll cut that waste yarn. And then I need to um, put. Then I need to put these needles in work and these in hold. So um, I'll put these. Uh, actually, these needles need to go out to hold. So everything to the right of zero goes out to hold, and everything to the left of zero goes in work but you don't want to put it all the way back to B you just want to go to position uh, upper working position uh, so that your stitches don't fall off so now what will happen uh, and honestly at this point you may just want to put your carriage on the other side and then knit eight rows of waist yarn here and be real careful here because this is where you're going to drop a stitch if if that's going to happen it will happen right there so make sure you've got a separation there and that's that's the end of our knitting portion so We'll take the weights off and see what we got. There's my weights. And you can get rid of some of your clips if they're... And now just put your carriage back in normal and you can knit the whole thing off. And so here it is. There's... Um, here's our heel. and our toe and our hem which will fold over like that and uh, now we'll graft this we'll graft the toe to the um, top and we'll take the waist yarn off here and then we'll mattress stitch up the side So the first thing I'm going to do is take this waste yarn off and see, make sure that's good. And what I'm just going to do is cut that last bit of green. Don't cut any of the white. Just cut that last stitch of green. And then you can go here and pull that uh, tail. Pull it out and then it'll come off. So there's the hem and you see it'll fold over like, like this and overlap. Then I um, now we need to graft uh, the toe to the foot. So that's um, we're grafting these white stitches here to this row here 
which is mostly red, but there's one white stitch in there. So we're going to start, we'll take this white tail that's over here. So take that white tail and then thread the thread your needle. And um, this, I think I cut mine a little too long, so I'm going to give myself some. And you don't want to go too short, but too long can also be kind of difficult to deal with. So it'll just come with practice. So the first thing is what I'm doing is grafting this stitch here over to... this stitch here. So I'm getting to the end of my grafting and uh, I'm just wanting to make sure I pick up every stitch so I'm still doing following the path of those green stitches but I don't want to miss a stitch at the end so I'm just being very careful so I've got to go from here over to here and then this one over to that one. Now I can take the um, now I can take the waste yarn off so that's pretty easy. You just pull you do them two at a time actually. go. So that's the toe and then I'll weave that tail in to the other side and uh, then I'll graft, uh, not graft, but um, mattress stitch up the side. So to mattress stitch I'm going around here and then down and then I'll fold it over and then I'll mattress stitch up the side being careful to match the pattern. So I have this sewed up, this uh, side part, the cuff, and it looks like that, but then if you sort of fold it on the peak where the picos are, it will fold over like that. So, um, and then um, I ended up tacking mine down with just going through with uh, some white thread from the other side just to keep it flattened out. You may or may not have to do that. Uh, but sometimes, if especially if it, you've put a lot of things in it, it's going to pull. So on this one, I went around with just some white thread in there and you can see how it kind of stays down. So now I'm just going to mattress stitch up this this side and this you just really want to keep your uh, go one stitch in and go one stitch in and really just try to keep the pattern straight. So here it is and um, I've sewn it up the side and then this part ended up like that but if you fold it down it should stay in place if it doesn't stay in place take some yarn white and go along in here just uh, threading it and you know sewing and it'll stay and then I've made a little I cord loop that I showed in the last stocking video that I'm gonna put right there and that's it. And if you like the videos, please like and subscribe. Consider um, hitting the Buy Me a Coffee link. 
and let me know what you think. Thanks.